Hi and good morning. Uh, continuing with our Word Tracker keyword tool and how it is used to cluster our problem statements, we're going to look at a couple of really quick spreadsheets. After you have conducted your basic keyword research in Word Tracker, this is what you're going to export. You'll see the keyword and then a couple of other columns that say searches and predictions. The searches column tells you how many times that particular keyword phrase has appeared in the search engines during the last 160 days. The prediction column uh, tells you how many times those searches are expected to appear within the next 24 hours. And as you can see what we're looking at here is a basically a lot of raw data. I'm going to scroll down here for a second and you can see that there are some 1,000 different uh, keyword phrases that have the word dog included in it along with their their search results and prediction results and it's very apparent to see that there's a substantial market uh, using the word dog but as I said a few minutes ago likewise what you see is nothing more than a bunch of raw data which is really meaningless at this point I'll continue scrolling down here for just a second so you can get the idea of the breadth and scope of what keyword uh, tracker, the word tracker tool will do for you. Uh, when it does export, it exports it in a, uh, a, a sorted manner where it lists the most active uh, keywords at the top and the least active keywords at the bottom. Switching over, I've already segmented uh, that list that we just looked at and what I did was, I the first thing I did was I went in and I added a couple of additional columns. I entered the uh, subcluster column along with, let me scroll over here a second, a cluster column. Uh, the purpose of the cluster column is to kind of start sorting this data into similar clusters so that we can start segmenting our market. And you'll find that uh, oftentimes uh, sorting by one criteria doesn't really get you to where you need to be. So it's not uncommon to uh, have even further segments or other subclusters. I've seen them go as many as five or six deep. Uh, any more than that and, and I think that it's going to get way too confusing. Uh, also I'll add a couple of other columns where I want to uh, go ahead and subtotal by cluster both the uh, searches and the predictions. And now we start, we're starting to see a little bit uh, more useful data from this basic keyword search. And what I've done is I've sorted, I just took the first uh, 100 words so that uh, we wouldn't be inundated with a lot of information. And I, I sorted them according to category. And then I went within each category and then sorted those based on what I call action words or intent and now we've got some fairly meaningful data let me uh, let me show you what I'm talking about here I'm gonna pull this over and I'm going to hide uh, let's see how do I want to do this I'm going to go ahead and hide the searches column and I'm going to hide the prediction column because what I'm mostly interested in, it, in at this point is simply identifying what markets I have. Now with this information in place you can see that if I scroll back over here looking at uh, the first cluster adoption uh, I've got uh, this broken down into four separate subclusters which really starts to identify what my markets are and I know that pertaining to dog health I can look at somewhere in the neighborhood of 359 searches on a daily basis but then if I start looking at how to adopt a dog that jumps up dramatically jumps up to 4410 searches on a daily basis so now you can see how we're able to take this basic raw data that the uh, keyword research tool gives you and cluster those problem statements into market segments so we can then further focus our efforts on, on uh, marketing to a specific market segment. And uh, thank you for listening. Uh, next time we're going to get more into competitive research using a worksheet that shows you how to begin identifying your competition in an organized manner. Thank you much.